Good morning, Oster Hill. If you are able, please stand and join me for the call to worship. Welcome in the name of the Lord. Open your hearts today to hear God's word for you. Remember that God has called you to service. You may be seated. Good morning. I know it's overcast, but this is the day the Lord has made. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Um, on behalf of Reverend Cho and all of our church, I welcome you to Sunday morning service with Oxon Hill United Methodist. We are a diverse, multicultural, multilingual congregation, and we hold our arms out and welcome to all. Whether you're a familiar face or a first time visitor, um, whether you're present in the sanctuary or joining us via Zoom, um, Oxon Hill United Methodist Church is a place where we come together as a family to celebrate grow and encounter the life transforming power of God. Please take a moment to greet those around you with a warm welcome. And um, even though this is fourth Sunday, we will not be having coffee hour downstairs, but we will be having coffee hour next week on the 29th. Now, as we embark on this Sunday service, May the peace of the Lord be with you all and let our worship be a source of inspiration. Amen. Praise the Lord, Oxen Hill. Praise the Lord. Let's stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise for he is worthy of all our praises. We will sing with joy and thanksgiving in our hearts. <clears throat> the song titled Blessed Assurance Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a place of glory divine. Heir of salvation, virgins of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. 
praise him, my Savior, all the day long. Amen. You may be seated. Let us bring our heart before God. Let us bow our heart. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, you are our rock of salvation. You are our source of everything. You are our shelter. Mary God, we come here to rest upon your presence, your love. We come just as we are. No matter what we have done, no matter what we have dealing with it, because you are our God, you are our creator, and you are our everything. That's why we are here to set apart our time to communion with you, to worship you, to sing our songs, to pray. So, mighty God, listen to us, listen to our prayers. Be with us this day and helping us to put our priorities in order so that we may faithfully serve you by serving your people. We come here seeking your healing mercy, so heal our spirit, our bodies. Enable us to follow your ways all the days of our lives. Mariga, please listen to our cries of pains and petition and supplications. Sometimes we don't know what we can do to make our situation better, but we bring it to your hands, it to your concerns, so that uh, we can experience your deliverance. God of merciful and patience, we come to your offering, sometimes lip service to serving you. But when things get difficult, when we are called to do something which is hard for us, we shy away from the duty and the opportunity. We turn our back, our service, out of fear of failure. Forgive us, O oh God. Have mercy on us. Heal our fears and our weakness and strengthen us and give us courage to be truly your disciples and rejoicing in your presence. Mariga, we lift up special prayers for our loved ones. For those who seek in my name, I will give to you. So according to your promise, we ask your deliverance. We ask in your healing and restoration upon our loved ones. For those who receive hospital treatment, for those who seek your mercy on our situations for our loved ones. Mariga, also we offer special prayers for those who lost our loved ones. Please comforting their souls and their heart. And listen to our petitions as we bring our heart to you. And we believe that you will deliver us on your due time, even though we don't see it but uh, you are walking behind our sin. So please give us confidence, give us strong faith to stand firm on your promise. And now we offer our prayers as your children, trusting that you will deliver whatever situation we have, trusting that as your son Jesus Christ told us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. Today's reading will be coming from the book of James, verses 13 through chapter 4. I'm sorry, book of James, chapter 3 and 13 through chapter 4 and 3. And it goes, wisdom from above. Are any of you wise and understanding? Show that your actions are good with a humble lifestyle that comes from within, I'm sorry, comes from wisdom. However, if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, then stop bragging and live in ways that deny the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above. Instead, it is from the earth, natural and demonic. Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and everything that is evil. What of the wisdom from above? First, it is pure, then peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good actions, fair and genuine. Those who make peace <clears throat> sow the seeds of justice by their peaceful acts. Chapter four, conflict with people and God. What is the source of conflict among you? What is the source of your disputes? Don't they come from your cravings that are, <clears throat> that are at war in your own lives? You long for something you don't have, so you commit murder. You are jealous for something you can't get, so you struggle and fight. You don't have because you don't ask. You ask and don't have because you ask with evil intentions to waste it on your own cravings. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you, Sister Jackie. Uh, this is a children's and youth time, so, so I'd like to offer the children's message. Okay, well, I have uh, love. Our uh, Logan and Oliver and Victor and Joy today. So glad to see you guys. You want to come over here? Yes, please come over here. Uh, have a seat. Okay. You can sit over here and sit. It's like this. Okay. Yeah. Mama, you can come, Ashley, you can come here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Would you give me a microphone? Okay. You want to sit? Maybe he can sit, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, they can have a microphone. <laughs> okay, guys, I have uh, two bottles. By the way, would you welcome them with your big hands? <laughs> so they will tell uh, their names. So from your, uh, from from the Logan, would you tell your name and how old are you? My name is Logan, and I'm 11 years old. Wow, wow! So would you give Oliver? My name is Oliver. I'm nine years old, and I'm turning 10 this year. Wow! <laughs> My name is Victor, and I'm and I'm six. Oh, you're six. Okay. <laughs> this is Enzo, and he's two. He's two. Wow. So and good to see. Shy. He's really shy. Wow. Okay. I can see. So I found out this morning that uh, mom, Ashley, mm -hmm. Ashley, would you name to the congregant? What's your name? My name is Ashley. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Well, Logan told me that their names and then their parents, Ashley and Eddie, they named it. It's, it's, it is so amazed. Um, I am so glad he told me that the, their name is L-O-V-E, mm -hmm. which means love. 
So if you forget their names, you can remember L-O-V-E, Logan, Oliver, and Victor, Victor and Angel, right? So it's easy to remember their name. <laughs> And that is very smart things to do. Yeah. Yes, thank you for telling me about your names. Well, today I brought the two bottles, okay? So can you guess what's inside here? Okay, you can use the microphone, okay. That's great that you imagined it very well. Yeah, you're right that one is the bottle of water, inside is the water there, you can drink it. But I don't know what's inside in here. Okay. Oh, would you, can you give him a microphone? Well, what do you think what's inside in here? Total and total powder. Cocoa powder. Okay, do you want to drink it? No thanks, okay. <laughs> okay, you are very cautious. Okay. Oh, mm, let's see. Well, let's look at it. This bottle, we can say, represent God who gives us living water. Okay. This bottle represents us, maybe me and you, everybody. Okay. So when we're looking at these bottles, there is a full of some kind of something in there. But the God wants to fill with this bottle. How we can fill the uh, God's living water in here? Uh, anybody? Yes. Just pouring here? But it's full of the something inside in here. Anybody, any ideas? Pull some of these, and then we can pull the living water inside here. Bingo, that's a good idea. You did the Logan too. Okay, this represents us, this represents God. When we have with so much like uh, uh, hate, Deception and lie, you know, like a slander and blaming and complaint inside here. And we cannot pour water, the living water in here. So one new way we can do is to pouring water out from this bottle, and then we can fill with this living water. Let's do it, okay? Okay, let me see. We have a trash bin. So... So this represents me. If inside me there's so much complaint mm -hmm. and slander and deception and lie and hate, and God cannot come to into our, me. God cannot come to into this bottle. So one thing we can do is we have to pour the, these bad things so that we can fill with the Holy Spirit. We can fill with the God inside in us. Would you like to do that? So anybody, would you like to pour the water here? You will do it? Go ahead. Ooh, ooh, good job. Good job. Yeah, we want to get out all of the dirt inside, but still remain in here. Well, until we can keep pouring water with this living water with God's word. Anybody would you like to pour water like this? You can do it. Over the trash can. Great job. That's enough? Yeah, okay. Well, still it's uh, inside because still remains some of them dirt inside here. So we can keep pouring water here. You want, Oliver, you want to pour in water over here? Okay. Yeah, trying to get rid of the, all the dirt. Well, it's not the one time. It has to be 
pouring water and water again and, and clean out this bottle. And then we can fill it with the living water, with the God, and God's love and the Holy Spirit, so that we can fill it with the peace and joy, right? So the only way we can fill it with the Holy Spirit, we have to confess in the name of Jesus Christ and come to God and uh, you know, uh, filled with the uh, words of God, with the Bible message, then, then we can and, you know, live like a living water. Okay? So sometimes when you feel like uh, you are not happy, you are sad, and you feel like you want to hate your friends, and one way you can uh, you know, clean this bottle, in clean in us with the name of Jesus Christ, you can pray to God. Just like when you pour in water from these bottles so that you can fill it with the God's love inside in you. Okay? Okay, let us pray. Gracious loving God, we give you thanks. Sometimes we feel sad. We are not happy because we are so much full of the dirty things inside of, inside of us so much complain and hate and lie things. Mighty God, make us to clean our heart with the blood of Jesus Christ so that we can live in happy and joy. And when we build with the words of God, we can experience your uh, peace and your strength. And we thank you for bringing us Jesus Christ to clean uh, our heart and our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Great job. So I'm going to give you some of them the cross. Just thinking about the cross when you feel sad. And then this is a prayer cross. Uh, cross. So you can just uh, touch it and pray uh, in Jesus' name. Then God will give you peace. Amen. Okay. Great job. Would you give a big hand? Uh, you may go. You can go. Great job, Angel. <laughs> Good morning. If you are able, please rise for the gospel. The gospel is from Mark chapter 9, 30 to 37. I'm reading from the Common English Version. Jesus predicts his death. From there, Jesus and his followers went through Galilee, but he did not want anyone to know it. This was because he was teaching his disciples. The human one, will be delivered into humankind, hence, they will kill him. Three days after he is killed, he will rise up. But they did not understand this kind of talk, and they were afraid to ask him. They entered Capernaum. When they had come into a house, he asked them, what were you arguing about during the journey? They did not respond, since on the day they had been debating with each other about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be least of all and the servant of all. Jesus reached for a little child, placed him among the twelve, and embrace him. Then he said, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. That is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, Speak to each of us. Open our eyes and ears and heart 
to listen your word of encouragement, healing, and blessings and restorations. Inspire us by your word so that we can be renewed, we can be healed, we can be strengthened in your holy name. That the church says, Amen. So I always begin with questions nowadays. So I'm going to ask you some questions. How do we measure greatness? How we measure greatness? Yes, this is. Would you say that? Uh, open by by people who and you know, accomplished, right? Okay. Anything else? How we can measure the greatness? Oh, I see, I see. So, well, in worldly view, and uh, you know, sometimes often people measure the, the greatness, the whatever people accomplish things. And in the Bible, Sister Vivian says, heavenly wisdom is that Jesus told us, so you, if you want to be first, you have to be last. So that's the message today. Well, let's see. The measure of greatness often depends on what we value the most. And then when we value money, greatness is measured by wealth, such as Elon Musk, or some other people who gain the money, whatever they accomplished. When we value power, greatness is measured by positions, such as we think that Joe Biden, President Joe Biden or some other or who you know, held high positions. Or when we value fame, it is measured by popularity, such as uh, Taylor Swift. She gained the wealth and popularity and, and everything. So people think that the Taylor Swift is the greatest person. But there are many ways to measure greatness. Some may value intellect, that would be the one of example, Albert Einstein. Some may value for greatness courage, just as Clara Barton, who is recognized that her work with wounded led her, her worldwide organizations known as the Red Cross. Some may value who fight for witness and justice, such as Martin Luther King Jr. did. In our gospel lessons, Jesus told us how to measure the greatness. Jesus said to disciples that he will be betrayed and killed, and after three days he will rise. But the disciples did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask about it. Well, this is not the first time Jesus forecasted about his death and resurrection, but they still couldn't grasp what that meant. In, when they came to Capernaum, the people followed Jesus. There was children and adults, everybody, men and women. And then disciples argued with each other who was the greatest. And you says, I am the greatest because I'm the first person followed Jesus when Jesus invited me to follow me. And Peter said, oh, I am the greatest because I recognize who Jesus is. I said that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. That's why I am the greatest. And Matthew said, I am the greatest because I collect a tax from the people. You see... You know, I did these things for you, so I'm the greatest. Well, then Jesus asked, where are you now? Why were you arguing on the road? Why you guys in a fight each other? But the, they kept quiet. You know why they kept quiet? 
Could you say it again? <gasps> yeah, you're right. You listen very well. Wow. I'm so impressed. He listened very well. They were afraid to ask. Yes, you're right. And they were embarrassed because Jesus talking about the death and suffering and persecution, but they, they are, are talking about the, you know, fighting with each other, who is the greatest person. Well, we all have desire to be great. We want to be the best, what we do, and we want to excel for anything we do. So Jesus says in verse 35 and 37, listen carefully. Anyone who wants to be the first must be the very last, the servant of all. Then Jesus took a little child whom he placed among them, put the child in his arms, and said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me Welcome not me, but the one who sent me. It means you welcome God. So what does it mean to you about Jesus' teaching? Be humble? Okay, great. So let's dig into what it that means. Okay, the word first in Greek is protos, which means in any succession of things or persons or influence or owner or principle. This word is used in Revelation chapter 2, verse 28. To the angel of the church in Samar writes, these are the words of him who is the first and the last who died and came to life again. Well, Jesus surprised them. If you want to be the first and to be greatest person, you must be willing to be last. It is about the servant leadership. Jesus shows the greatest example of servant leadership through his sacrificial love on the cross for us. In Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, it says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Ultimately, greatness is found in Jesus' death and resurrections. Greatness is found in Jesus' sacrificial love for us. So the value of the greatness in God's kingdom, in God's eyes, is willing to serve and sacrifice for God and helping others. All the greatness in the Bible is evidence from those who humbled, somebody said, be humble, and submitted their will to God's will. Then why would Jesus raise a child in his arms and welcome these little children to explain about the greatness? Because of their pure heart? Okay, great. Yes, a children has a pure heart. A child often is described as a vulnerable and fragile in human standards. They are not strong as adults, but for Jesus, greatness is found in a child. As he said, because of their pure heart. So, and when we're looking at the children, as the Apostle Paul confessed in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, he says, For when I am weak, I am strong. There is wisdom there. We learned the lesson from our ch children's answers with the questions in Sunday school. The question is, what would that get me into heaven? What are we supposed to do, go to heaven? To trust God? Great, I'm so proud of you, to trust God. Okay. Well, one child answered, 
If I sold my house and my car had a big garage sale and gave all my money to the church, would that get me into heaven? No, the children all answered. If I cleaned the church every day, mowed the yard, and kept everything neat and tied, would that get me into heaven? Again, the answer was no. Well then, if I was kind of too kind to animals and gave candy to all the children and loved my wife, would that get me into heaven? Again, they all answered no. Well, then how can I get into heaven? You said trust God? Yes. Oh, yes, you're right. Trust God and believe in Jesus Christ. That's the correct answer. But in this episode, a five-year-old boy shouted out, You got to be dead. <laughs> Without dying, you cannot go to heaven. <laughs> there is wisdom there. You got to be dead. Just we had an exper experiment with the children's times. Just like a child, we must be dead in our pride and stubbornness and prejudice. We must be dead in our selfish ego to self-serving but we have to be dead in our selfish ego in order to experience God's greatness in us. When the disciples argue who among themselves was greatest, they miss the point of Jesus' teaching. The disciples are not listening to Jesus, but the Victor and Logan and Oliver and Angel and Ashley, they listen to Jesus' teaching, trust God. The disciples are not listening to Jesus. They only focus on their value of success. The value of their greatness is totally different from what Jesus required all Christians. It is about our willingness to serve the poor, the least, the last, the outcast with humility. That we acknowledge our human weakness and we acknowledge we need God's grace. We are stubborn saying that we don't need God. But the true children of God accept God's grace and welcome others just as they are children of God. We find greatness in the humble act of love and service every day by people who submit their will to God and care for the sick, pray for the poor, and the least and the outcast. So whenever we respect the status and dignity of a child and accept it not as an inferior, but as a valued child of God, they practice the virtue of God's greatness as a Christians. For Jesus, when we serve the lost and most powerless among us with a humble heart, we are not better than them. We are just children of God all together. But that they will be rewarded in the heaven. When we serve the lost and the last, we have now learned to sit at the feet of Jesus. Luke chapter 15, verse 7, it says, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repent than only over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Well, I confess that I am so grateful to God. Our brother Ross Snyder invited people into our worship service during the bread ministry while he is feeding the hungry. I am so grateful to God when Sally Hoffman invited Brother Antonio into our worship service as he was wandering around the church. I am so grateful to God that Carol Damsey gave out the cookies of the worship service by showing God's hospitality with her care and loving spirit. I am so grateful to our sister Linda Bowman 
Before she passed away, she raised her hands, Pastor, invite the kids, children into our worship service. I will do the young ministry needing for the community. We are given opportunities to serve the lost around us. We are surrounded by lost people, but we may miss the opportunity to invite them to sit in the feet of Jesus Christ to listen the words of God. We may not even recognize them, their sufferings, their cries of pain, because we want to seek what is best for us rather than what is best for God. Let me tell you some story. In 1992, a Los Angeles County parking control officer came upon brown Cadillac illegally parked next to the curb on the street. The officer dutifully wrote out a ticket. Neglecting the man seated at the driver's seat, the officer reached inside the open car window and put the $30 ticket on the dashboard. The driver of the car made no excuses. No argument ensured with good reason. The driver of the car had been shot in the head 10 to 12 hours before, but was sitting up, stiff as a board, slumped slightly forward with blood on his face. He was dead. The officer saw pro preoccupied with the ticketing writings, was unable to recognize out of ordinary. So he got back in his car and drove away. Likewise, we are so busy trying to get what is best for us. We don't want to be the last we want to be praised and recognized for our effort and successes. We work so hard, but we don't want to see people whose lives are lost, lonely and empty. We neglect the people whose lives are at the edge of their life. We fail to see people who are wandering around us with no meaning to their lives. We are reluctant to, to get out of our comfort zone and invite them into Christ's love. Jesus invites us to look around us and seek the lost and the outcast. If we, we want to do our best for God, we need to invite the lost around us. The siblings in Christ as Jesus invites us into God's amazing grace that we don't deserve, but through his sacrificial love, we are called to seek the lost. If we feel less influenced, are reluctant to invite others into the church, this means that we have forgotten our core values. We are called to make a disciple of Jesus Christ by our act of love and invitation. This is our core value. We are called to seek the lost and welcome a child who is vulnerable so that they can be restored, they can be fed by the bread of heaven, they can be redeemed and strengthened in Jesus Christ to overcome all temptation and trial and tribulations. So I give you homework this week. We were like a child, vulnerable child, but God adopted us as a God's beloved child. So I give you homework this week. Look around you and seek the lost and invite them who seem to lost and lonely, who does not go into the church, who stop coming to the church, Instead of judging them in your wisdoms, just be a listening ear. Just listen for them and invite them into the church to fellowship with God and with other believers. 
Would you like to do that? If you want to do that, raise your hands. Yes. Just look around your neighbors, your families, your community. Listen to them, what they are struggling, and pray for them, and be a listening ear. Just listen rather than speaking. In doing so, may God's mighty power be upon you and bless you, give you courage, give you courage and confidence to share the love of Christ with your sharing, with your witness. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we were like a, a vulnerable child, but you called us to be your child to be your children of God. We give you thanks. Now you give us commandment to seek out the lost, to be there for them, to be a listening ear and pray for them. Look around the sick, the lost, invite them into your hands, into the fellowship of the church and into the fellowship with you. So give us courage and confidence that we can truly seek the lost and embrace them, then invite them to you so that we all experience your peace and joy and strength together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in praise and worship. Let's stand all over the church and join our voices together as we sing, here I am, Lord, I will go, Lord, if you lead me. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. Oh, who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I will make the stars of night. I will make the darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Till 
their hearts be satisfied. I will give a life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. seated. Just as we sang, here I am, Lord, send me, I will go and tend the poor and the lame for those who are lost. We give our whole selves to God because God gave us his whole life in Jesus Christ to save us. So as we promised to God, as we sang together, let us give our heart to God with tithes and offerings. What we are doing, we can sing, give thanks to God. You are blessed. You are invited. Now go out to seek the lost and share the Christ love with them. Go in peace. Give thanks with, with a grateful heart. heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Let us pray. 
God of abundance and blessings. You are the source of our blessings. You are a generous one, full of mercy and goodness for your creations. Father God, we give thanks to you because when we are weak, you are our strong. You are our everything. So bless these gifts and tithes and offerings and pour our whole selves as you bring it to you. Bless us and multiply. Make us be fruitful for your kingdoms so that we can reach out to the lost, the outcast, the least, and the last. We thank you. We believe that you hear our prayers and bring your abundance and blessings, provision and providence into our lives, into our loved ones, and into our church. Let the church say, Amen, Amen. You may be seated. Oxon Hill. Um, don't forget we have uh, Sunday school on Sunday mornings at 920 on uh, Zoom for adults. Uh, we have the uh, Value Identity Purpose Praise Worship Services on Sunday evening, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Finance Committee meeting will be meeting on the 23rd this week at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Dance class for exercise, that's Tuesday afternoons at 1.30. A Bible study every Wednesday. Um, and that we are studying the book of Esther, uh, claiming identity. So if you would like to cultivate a deeper relationship with God, uh, please um, join us on Zoom on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Um, that dance class exercise, I believe that's at 1 o'clock on Tuesdays. Um, so that would be, if you're interested, Zoom in at 1 o'clock on Tuesdays. Uh, Prayer Vine Gathering are the first and third Thursdays of the month. Next one looks like October 3rd at 7 p.m. Uh, Coffee and Connection, October 20th. Uh, church Conference will be held on October 1st, and that will be 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, Cindy Cobley reminded me to invite everyone next Sunday. There will be coffee hour after church, and what a great opportunity to invite someone to come to church and share food and fellowship afterward. Um, so keep that in mind when you're inviting to, to church and stay around afterward. Um, our structural assessment, please pray for the church and our, um, our issues with the uh, building, roof and air conditioning. Our bread ministry uh, meets on Thursdays. If you can help, that would be fantastic. Um, uh, 9 to 12, um, they start giving out the food at 11, but all are welcome to help. And if you're interested in singing, uh, please see Manny and the adult choir. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, the Advent uh, devotions. Yes, if you are writing an Advent devotion, please have them to Vivian by the 25th, which is Wednesday. Say midnight on the 25th or? Okay, so you got a few days. Thanks. Children's choir presentation next week. So. Maybe Logan and uh, Oliver and Victor, and then you can, she will send uh, some video clip, the music to your email, and they can listen and practice at home. And come next week, maybe earlier, uh, like you came this you know, Sunday, and you can practice with her so you can present. Yeah, 10 o'clock, yes, okay, yes. Yes? Thank you, Sister Barbara Bowman. So the uh, viewing is 11 to 11.30 because of due to the previous, previous like, uh, the events. Yes, yes, okay. And the service is 11.30, okay. Here on uh, Friday 27, next week. Stand all over the church as we sing our closing 
hymn of faith, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let its praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen, 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 amen. Good. Thank you, Logan and Victor Oliver. Well, Oxen Hill received the benedictions. God invited us to seek out the lost. If you want to be first, and you must be last, that means we need to seek out the laws and serve them and invite them into Christ's love. You heard and you sang, we standing on the promise of God. So go in peace and bring the God's good news to those who sit in darkness, to those who are struggling from their aliment. Bring the peace of God and strength of God through your sharing, through your listening, through invitations. May God bless you, may God keep you, and gracious to you, and may God's countenance shine upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Well, before we sing, I just want to welcome again our um, the uh, Logans, uh, the grandparents here, and great grandparents here. So good to see you. And uh, we have, uh, would you give big hands? And then, uh, would you remind, give the microphone here. Uh, would you share your uh, name? And uh, Dave and Judy, we're from Class, Cass Lambert, Oregon. Ah, oh, you're visiting here. Yes, welcome, David, Judy, and then Logan's and uh, uh, Logan's grandmother and great grandmother. Hello, hello. Hi, I'm May Anderson, and I'm the great grandparent of the children. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, I'm Barry Anderson. Mm -hmm. 
I've been here about 40 years, but it's been a while since I've come back. Yes, so, well, welcome, welcome. Thank you for further away. Yes, yes. Uh, well, please share your, your you know, joys together. <laughs> yeah, raise your hands. Well, welcome, uh, sisters. Uh, would you remind us? <laughs> would you give big hands? Would you want to share your greetings? Yeah. Good morning, and thank you for letting me come here. I tried all the doors, and it's like, Lord, I can't get in. He said, go to the front where you always get your food, and I came. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, love, let us sing and march it to the world to bring the Christ light. Amen. Amen. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises yeah, but, uh, of God. Yeah, but okay. I'm. You guys are good. You guys are growing up, Mr. Loves. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Ashley. She used to be a youth member of this church. It's good to hear that we're having the Logans here and May Anderson. May, this is Mickey. Welcome. Good morning, Mickey. This is Patty. Uh -huh. Hi. Oh, 